welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be telling you about the programs we run at Harriet Watt University in computer science. You came to this site because I believe you are interested in computer science. Computers are everywhere. They are used in surgery. They, we wouldn't feel safe in the air without computers because computers really control the air traffic or the clever algorithms of the computer. Computers help us simulate the real world. For example, to train a pilot, you may not have the right conditions of storm and wind and uh, rain outside for the pilot to be trained under all the necessary conditions, the different conditions that the pilot needs to be trained in. However, in a flight, in a, in, a, in a special cockpit, we will use a flight simulator for training the pilot. The pilot will sit in a special cockpit. There will be the sensors which detect the actions of the pilot and then will the cockpit accordingly. And then the pilot will see all these computer generated images and will have the same feeling, bumps and rides and whatever, as if it's in the outside world under all these harsh conditions. And it's all while the pilot is simply sitting in a comfortable cockpit, being trained without any danger. The police realized a long time ago that the best way to handle vast amount of data or criminal information is to actually store it on network computer system. In fact, computers are used not only in surgery, in the police detective work, in um, training under different conditions for a pilot. They are also used to detect the right medication for the right illness. They are used to detect actually the right illness of uh, people. They are used to um, uh, in farming to create clever algorithms for farming, uh, they are used in music, they are used in a number of areas of our life. So you might say, well how, if I study computer science, will I really be able to learn to do all these, uh, to apply my what I learned to all the different areas? How will I, do I really, is that possible, is that feasible? Well, all of these algorithms really start from building blocks. Building blocks based on material you are you learn when you're studying computer science. Building blocks and techniques. Techniques like machine learning, where algorithms will improve automatically through experience. Deep learning algorithms will learn the more they do the work, the more they learn how to proceed with particular tasks. Artificial intelligence, which is day after day is producing impressive, clever algorithms to do different things. Chess is played more cleverly by computers than by many humans. Then techniques you learn while you are studying computer science like models and visualization and automation and verification of software, verification that uh, lanes function correctly, that the train uh, auto, we can run cars automatically, a self-driven car. All these involve these clever algorithms that you learn how to write and code. You learn how by studying basic computer science courses and computer science blocks. Another important thing you study when you're studying computer science is the ability to collect and analyze big data. In fact, data is the new currency of the world. A report in 2015 found that by 2025, the value of data per year will be 3.9 and 11.1 trillion US dollars. Farmers use data to make decisions. In fact, the Department of US, the US Department of Agriculture, is creating large algorithms based on a large collected number of data. And these algorithms work so that we don't need to use that much fertilizers, we don't need to use that much water, we can save on fertilizers and water and seeds and even land and really know which, which land is right for which crop. 
and we could save on all of this and still produce the best quantity and quality of crops. And all this is done by creating these clever algorithms using these various techniques from computer science, including artificial intelligence and data mining and, uh, and uh, machine learning, etc. And these algorithms are being used and sold at many countries in the world, including France, Brazil, and the USA. Computer science remains one of the fastest developing subjects, and actually it's one of the most influential subjects. It is by nature very highly applied subject and need, yet still needs a precision foundation and theory. Computer science is also very highly interdisciplinary because it brings many subjects together in ways that were not possible before. And many scientific results would not have been achieved if we didn't have computers. Computers themselves are able to learn. But remember, computer science is a new subject. Computers are much less than 100 years. And yet, they have achieved so much so far. But the road is still long ahead. It remains difficult for computers to recognize faces, voices, translation between different languages it still needs a lot of work. Uh, predicting useful drugs for different uh, illnesses still needs a lot of work. So we have barely begun in our works with computers, yet what they have achieved so far is impressive. So we need more people to develop and work and research into this fascinating subject of computer science. Our degrees of computer science at Heliot Watt are, of course, not only professionally accredited by the best professional accreditation bodies in the UK, including the British Computer Society and the Engineering Council, but we are also commended for our practices. The last BCS accreditation visit, because they visit the universities in the UK every five to six years, the last visit took place in 2015, and we were commended for best practice in student mentoring, and also best practice for professional legal and ethical issues. We're very good at what we do, and this is evidenced by the National Student Survey and the, our students' opinion on us. In 2018, software engineering at Harriet Watt was ranked first in Scotland and joined first in the game for overall student satisfaction. In 2019, we received 85% overall satisfaction rating and 89.5% students agreed that staff are good at explaining concepts. Universities in the UK also go through a research assessment exercise, and that is again every six years. The last one took place in 2014, and that was uh, at, at that time, computer science at Harriet was was rated 23rd in the UK and 3rd in Scotland. Now, remember, we are a small university, not a huge university, so to come 3rd in Scotland is impressive. And now it's time I tell you about our degree program. You can study with us either for a BSc or a BSc Honours. The BSc is usually three years and the BSc Honours is usually four years. However, for those who come direct entry into year two, then they will do the BSc Honours in three years instead of four years. You can add to that, to your BSc degree, you can add an optional year for industry. You get so you spend a year industry in that optional year, and you get not only the BSc, you get the BSc plus diploma in industrial training. And this is for the different strands that you can study BSc with us for. Because you can do your BSc either in computer science, or in computer systems, or information systems. So to all of these, you can add one year for diploma in industrial training as option if you want it. We have also created just this academic year, from this year, started, started this year and will continue in the future, a degree of BSc in data science. 
it's a degree joint between our three departments in our school. We are the School of Mathematical and Computer Sciences. We consist of three departments, Computer Science, Mathematics, and Statistics. And we got together as three departments and created this new degree of BSc in Data Science. You could also study for an MEng, it's a Software Engineering MEng degree. It's a five year, but you can do it in four years if you come at direct entry into year two. Now, all these programs have the same philosophy. Practical approach underpinned by a sound grasp of the theory along with awareness of social issues. So now, not only you can do the BSc in computer science or computer systems or information systems, either BSc or BSc honors, but you can do them with specialization as well if you like. If you study BSc in computer science, you can specialize in data science or in games programming or in AI or in software engineering. If you study BSc in computer systems, you can specialize in games programming. And if you study BSc in information systems, you can specialize in management, internet systems, or interaction design. And remember, I told you we have also the BSc in data science, which is a unique blend of math, statistics, and computer science. And that degree introduces you to the specific methods for extracting knowledge from data. Because remember, data is the next currency of the world. So what are the entry requirements to our various degrees? For a year one entry requirement, you need hires, A, B, 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 including math, or A levels, B, 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 including math. For a year two entry requirement, you need excellent hires plus advanced hires, B, 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 including math and computing. And for A levels, uh, so or, so that for the year two entry requirement, so you either need the excellent hires plus advanced hires BBB, including mass computing, or A levels BBB, including mass and computing. So you might say, but that's too much mass. Either I don't have the mass or I don't like the mass. Well, don't worry about it. Because for a degree in computer systems and information systems, you do not require mass for entry. If you do computer systems, you will have two optional courses in math in year one. But you don't need to take them if you don't want, because they are optional. If, however, you take these two optional courses in year one, you could request for a transfer to BSc in computer science in year two. So now we've seen that you've got, you can study either a BSc in computer, in data science, which is between the three departments, or BSc in computer science, computer systems, and information systems, so in one of these three topics, or MEng. So now I'm going to tell you about the common thread between the BSc in computer science, computer system, and information system, and the MEng. The common thread. These are the subjects you study in every of your first four years. For all of these BSCs, the three of them, or the image. So what do you study in year one for all of them? The common thread is, of course, software development. You're talking here about software, it's computers. And you will also be studying some introduction to interaction design. You will also be studying things like computer systems, web design, and databases. So you're really learning here quite a lot of the basic for computation. In year two, you will be doing some experimental design, some software design, database management systems, and software development. In year three, you will do a group project and professional development. This is a group project which spans throughout the year, so that's semester one and semester two. It's a project between seven people, where together, the seven people, you will develop a large product as if it's a real life real world project you're working as if you finished your degree and you're in the outside world working for some company or some large industry and you're producing together a really large piece of software or 
um, whatever is requested from you to produce. So you produce that work through two, semester, through two semesters as a group of seven people. And this work will involve coding and writing and presentation and collection of data and analysis and evaluation and writing the manual of the product you produce and uh, testing and evaluating that product. So it really, uh, and time management and a collaborative work and teamwork and individual work. So this is a project that really is a realistic example of what you will get when you exit your study and go to the outside world and start working. So you'll be doing this in your year two and in your year three. And these projects are set by an industry or companies that we work with, because we work with quite a lot of them. And at the end of the year, they come to look at our best three group projects and they will uh, give them certificates of excellence and prizes. And in year four, each one of you, so individual project now, each one of you will do their own individual research project from a topic they really like. And there is a huge number of topics because we have, we are a large department with a large number of staff. Each have their own interest in different area of research and computer science. And you will get to know all of our staff and you will get to know all the teams that work there. And you will get to also know by year four, what is it you like most? Do you like games? Do you like uh, security? Do you like AI? Uh, do you like theory? So you will manage to find out by year four what you like. And then you will choose your dissertation project based on what you like and then work with the particular supervisor who is related to that area that you like and produce your first book, your first research project, your first individual project and it spans over two semesters in year four. In addition to that, in year four you will study a number of courses that you will be choosing from a large pool of options which range over number of advanced computer science courses from computer game programming to rigorous method to compute the classroom, big data, data mining, etc. And for example, in computing in the classroom, this is a course where you go as, as students to schools, you look at how computer science as a subject is being taught in schools, and then you by now are fourth year computer science student, you've developed your idea of computer science, you've learned a lot about computer science, now you go and see what are the recommendations you'll make for changing teaching of computer science in school. So you will be really, by doing these projects and the topic you like, you will be also putting your, you'll be putting your stamp on what you've learned so far from computer science and what you believe, how you believe computer science should be shaped. Now, in addition to the common threads that all of these degrees have, we're going now to look at each one of these degrees and see what it offers. First, we look at the MNG and the BSc in Computer Science. Those two degrees are very similar. The difference is that the BSc in Computer Science is a four-year degree, the MNG is a five-year degree. So in that extra year of MNG, you will be getting some extra material. The BSc in Computer Science is a four-year degree which will give you broad foundation with emphasis on theory and practice. Since this is also part of software engineering, you will also get that in your software engineering five-year degree. But in addition for your software, in your software engineering uh, five-year degree, you will be getting advanced software engineering material, you will be getting also management skill, and you will be getting industrial experience you will be spending six months in industry. So this extra year for the MNG is giving you more advanced software engineering material, management skills, and industrial experience of six months, for which you are paid, by the way. So now let's look at what is it you study in software engineering. As I said, the first to the third year is the same as computer science. In the fourth year, in addition to the common thread for all the degrees that we spoke about, which also include your fourth year individual project and uh, your choice of courses, 
you will do in your for, fourth year a professional and industrial studies course where you're learning here more about professional and industrial studies. You will also, in your fifth year, be spending six months in industry and you'll be working on a design and code group project and you will also be working on a software engineering master class where here you are in year five, you are still fascinated, fascinated to learn about some area of computer science that you are hearing quite a lot about. Uh, it's maybe an advanced area or it's maybe a controversial area or, or some topic, some deep research topic. And so you go and research it and you hold a number of master classes on it to your peers. So that's what you do in your software engineering. That's what you study in your MN degree. What about computer science, the BSc? So in addition to the common thread we spoke about, in the first year you will do software development one and two, logic and proof and discrete math. Because remember, as computer scientists you need to know not only about the applied stuff but also about the theory, about whether your programs are correct, about uh, how to logically think about your algorithm and to develop correct algorithms. So you really need to learn in year one some basic logic and proof and discrete math all the basic material that is needed for designing clever algorithms and checking some properties of our, your programs. In year two, you will study data structures and algorithms, so it's more algorithm because remember, the soul of the computer is the algorithm. You will learn web programming, um, different paradigms of programming languages, and hardware software interface, because remember the computer is body and soul, hardware and software. And in the third year, you will learn artificial intelligence, data communications and networking, operating systems and concurrency, foundations of computing and processing. So these are advanced topics in computer science, which really are giving you like the important material like artificial intelligence, uh, like concurrency, uh, data and communication, foundations of computation, limits of computation, uh, meanings of programs, language of computers, the language processor, what are these languages of computers. Now, running a BSc in computer science, this BSc degree, we realize that some students really like to also learn something about management skills and social technical skills. So we created for them a degree in information system where we provide a unique blend of computer science but also management and social technical skills. These are students that really want to move maybe to the business environment, to the corporate environment. So they really need to learn about management and marketing. And so we are replacing a lot of the perhaps coding material and uh, really paradigms and programming languages or uh, mass of computers, mathematics of computation. We're replacing that more by social technical skills and management and marketing, etc. So that's a BSc in information systems. What do you study when you do a BSc in information systems? In addition to the comment that all of these BSCs and the MNG provide, you will study in the first year, technology and society, enterprise and its business environment, and an elective course of your choice. Maybe Spanish, maybe French, maybe business, some elective course, there's plenty. In the second year, you will be doing more marketing, fundamentals of marketing, management in the global context, project management, creative design project, and operations management. So you can see marketing and management. So in addition to what you learn in the common thread where you have learned more about uh, data and about big data and about uh, databases and so on, you will also be learning about um, here about marketing and management and uh, um, operation and all kind of management, whether so it's project management, operation management and so on. In the third year, 
you'll be doing, in addition to the common thread you do in the third year for all our degree program, you'll be doing knowledge management, so how to manage knowledge, critical thinking, how to see through data, how to analyze it and how to decide what makes sense and what doesn't make sense, what holds, what doesn't hold, social, technical and soft systems, human resource management, organizational behavior and marketing communication. So you can see you're getting all the necessary flavor of this marketing and business management and uh, social technical skills in your degree of information system in addition to all the basic things you need about computations and computer science from the common thread for all our degrees. Now in addition to the BSc in computer science or the BSc in information systems, we have as I said above, BSc in computer systems. So the BSc in computer system is really a midway between the BSc in computer science and the BSc in information system. Here what you learn, you learn broad foundation, but you have a strong emphasis on practice and more social technical skills. You learn more social technical skills. So how do we manage to do this bridge? We removed from our BSc in computer science the math courses, like the foundation courses in year four. We removed in year three. We removed these and we replaced them by uh, information systems courses. We also, in year one, made the, the mathematic courses, like logic and proof or discrete math courses, made them an option. You can take them or you can drop them and replace them by something else. In year two, we also replaced some some courses from computer science, you were giving you the option to drop the courses of year two computer science and replace them by some courses in information system. So the BSc in computer system is a midway between computer science and information science. What do you study when you do a BSc in computer system? In the first year, it's the same as computer science. But logic and proof and discrete math are optional and you can replace them by, you can keep them or replace them by a number of other courses. You have a number of options you can choose from. In the second year, you have data structures and algorithms like you had in computer science, web programming like you had in computer science, programming languages again like you had in computer science, but you have a choice of two courses from the following four courses. Hardware Software Phase or Software Development 3 or Creative Design Project or Operations Management. So you can see, you can drop two courses from Computer Science and replace them by two courses from Information Systems. So remember, that's what you're studying Computer Systems in Year 1, Year 2, Year 3, in addition to the common thread that we spoke about for all our degrees. In the third year, you'll take artificial intelligence and data communications and networking, operating systems and concurrency, and language processors. So these are all the things you also study in computer science, in addition to the common thread. But you're replacing your foundation courses of computer science year three by a knowledge management course and a social technical soft systems course. So that's what, you ha what happens in year three of your computer system. For all your degrees, for all our degrees, the outcome is as follows. For the bachelor graduate, you will have developed a thorough understanding of the core and you will have experienced a realistic group, year-long group project. For the honors graduate, you will have developed a deep understanding of topics and you will have produced original work in your individual project in year four. For the MNG graduates, you will have studied a broad range of subjects, including management and further advanced material, in addition to, to undertaking a six months industrial placement, which is paid also. So when you study computer science at Harriet Watt, you will become a well-rounded computer scientist and really you will be respected by future employers. We have a high degree of employability for our students who graduate from Harriet Watt University Computer Science. You will learn the latest on programming language theory, design, implementation, complexity, trade-off, efficiency, and termination. Robotics, we have one of the largest robot 
robots, uh, robot labs in, in the country. Uh, you will learn how to recognize speech and images. You program speech and image. Uh, you program the robots to deal with speech and images. You will learn how to create smart, interactive, user-friendly applications. You design smart and exciting games. So really, you will become a very successful computer scientist. And as ever, I always like to our students as examples. In the last two years running, the only team in the UK, team of students in the UK, to take part in, an, uh, in the worldwide 2.5 million Amazon Alexa prize competition, the only group of students of the UK to be selected to take part in that competition on two years running was a team of our students at Harriet Watt in the interactive lab. And here they are there with a number, a number of the students with a number of their teachers celebrating their success. So they went on two years running and took part in that competition where they, where they programmed a robot to act and behave in conversations like a, a human, which was so that the judges have a difficult uh, task finding whether it's a human they are conversing with or it's a machine they are conversing, conversing with. And the students went to Las Vegas, stayed in best hotels in there, paid all for by the competition, took part in these competitions on these two years running, and they were placed third in the world and won a 250,000 dollar research grant. An impressive achievement for undergraduate students and some postgraduate students. So that's an impressive um, achievement. And this is all evidence of how enthusiastic and excellent our students are. Our students also really take part in a number of societies' activities. They create it, they run it, Together with staff, they, they really like to collaborate, cooperate, and they like their subjects. They enjoy their subjects. So we have the game Jam Society, the Hackathon Society, it's a game society. Uh, we have a court clinic with, with, which is run between staff and students, and where they uh, help staff and students, help other students who need help with their code, their program, their programming language, skills, etc. Uh, our students also enjoy learning about the research that our staff do. They actually, the students become themselves like they are researchers. They really want to learn as much as they can about the subjects they are studying. And so they go and spend some internship in these uh, research groups and really delve into the research in computer science and the subject of computer science. We also have a big sister, little sister scheme that's a the new female students are paired up with current female students and they all get together and they provide a good, beautiful support network for newcomers and all together, in, also in collaboration with male students, organize a quizzes, an Ada Lovelace yearly day quiz joined with, the, with uh, our campus in Dubai because we also have a, the same degree of computer science in Dubai and social events and so on. So really, there is a community here. Our students are a community, and they work like a well-functioning community who is there learning and enjoying how it learns. And they also, uh, our students go to school and tell schools about our education, about how important education computer science is. If school kids or teenagers come to visit our lab to see, really see whether computer science is topics they will consider in the future. Our own computer scientists, science students are standing there, showing them our labs, telling them about how impressive the area of computer science is. So here are some pictures of some previous visits of schools to us and our students demonstrating to these visitors the robots we have or the labs we have and telling them about how exciting computer science is. Here's also a number of uh, pictures from, we celebrated, we are the oldest department in Scotland to be in computer science. 
we celebrated a couple of years ago our 50th anniversary. So here you see a picture of back more 50 years ago or when we opened our computer science uh, department. And then later on here you see some pictures of our students themselves uh, demonstrating to visitors our labs or our robots and telling them about how exciting it is to study computer science and how happy they feel at their studies at Harriet Watt. We also have very strong links with uh, the computing industry. We, rep we have representatives of more than 30 companies attend our industrial advisory board. Um, much of the research we do in computer science in our department is actually done in collaboration with leading computing enterprises. And students really like that because not only they spend time with our research uh, groups into, as internships, but they also meet those industrial collaborators and they go and spend time uh, with them as in turn with them. And also uh, they really enjoy the fact that our teaching is research led. So they are learning about the latest technology and the latest advancement in computer science by watching the research happen in front of their eyes. We collaborate with a large number of companies and industries. Uh, to, you know, there's too much to mention, but I will just say that uh, some of these companies and industries are the ones who have run our group projects uh, throughout the years, and they have come at the end and selected the best teams and gave them prizes in these third year group projects, groups of seven. And uh, they also, the computer, the in enterprises and industry, they send us some guest lectures to come and present what their companies are doing to our students in their classes and inviting our students to also apply for internships or jobs to work with them. And this is a win-win solution for both. The students really love that experience. Maybe in the summer they get the internships and they get the experience and get the money, or maybe they secure long-term employment. In fact, with the MH, for example, work placement, remember the, the students have the opportunity or have need for the MH degree to spend six months at an industrial uh, uh, company or uh, collaborator. And so they, go and spend those six months there, and many of them go on to secure an offer of employment at their placement, at the, at the place, you know, at the industry or company where they spend their placement. And of course, remember, there is also the opportunity for students to do a BSc with a one-year diploma in industrial training, and that gives them also the opportunity to spend one year at uh, industry pay, of course. So the industrial planes and uh, the internship with the industry and the uh, industrial training for that one year, all of it is paid by the company. Now, when, when, where do our students go when they finish studying with us? First, I'd like to say that 89% of our graduates are in work or further study within six months of graduating, and that 83% of whom are working at professional level. We really do foster a challenging and developmental environment for our students. And they know that and they enjoy it and they excel. They not only excel while they are studying at Harriet Watt, they excel also when they go out and start working in the real world. And they do really go out to a diverse range of industry. So, for example, some of our recent graduates are now working at a number of these companies or industries which which range over or, or enterprises which range from computer and communication industry like uh, BSkyB etc or software houses and developers like Scott Logic or IT management and consultancies like Logica and so on or internet e-commerce multimedia like uh, Amaze or Ezone Interactive or blah blah or financial service sector like HSBC and Prudential, Scottish Widows, or wider industry, Asian Tech, uh, BP, uh, Connecticut, uh, BAE Systems, etc. Or public sector, GCSQ, Scottish Government, UK Civil Service. So really, when our graduates 
once they finish their study, they go to a huge ranges of opportunities opens for them and they do very well in their future career. But also while they are studying with us, they have a number of other opportunities that they really enjoy. One of which is the Go Global. It is a scheme that we run between us in Edinburgh, our campus in Edinburgh, and our campus in Dubai. We started, we founded our campus in Dubai in 2005. We've been running a degree in computer science there since. And the Go Global allow our, and we are running the same courses we run here in Edinburgh, we run in Dubai. Same courses, same exams, same uh, style, same uh, assessment, same everything, same material, same everything. Which is now why it's possible and has, has always been enjoyable experience for students to go and spend one semester or more from Edinburgh to Dubai or vice versa from Dubai to Edinburgh. Since it's the same courses and same exam and same uh, experience, the pe people like to do that, students like to do that, because what they actually gain is tremendous. They learn, they gain a new country, new culture, and new experiences in collaboration, communication, meeting other people, looking at the world in a different window, different way. So this is a successful scheme go global between Edinburgh and Dubai. We have a campus in Malaysia also, which opened about five years ago. We have just put in our proposal for computer science to be taught at the Malaysia campus. And uh, it is very likely that this proposal will go through and will start in the coming academic year. And then once this happens, the Go Global opportunity will roll not only between Edinburgh and Dubai, but will also roll between the three campuses of Edinburgh, Dubai, and Malaysia. Another scheme that our students really enjoy and value is the Student Equipment Fund. This is an initiative that we started many years ago to help support our students to purchase the technology, whether it's hardware or data or software, to explore things they need while they are coding or doing their personal project or as part of a taught course or etc. So they might need a new hardware, new software, a new data, a, a, a new iPhone, a new Raspberry Pi, a number of things they might need. And so, and students, of course, they cannot afford to buy all these things they need because this is part of their study and not really part of their uh, other life. So they put in a little uh, funding request and we have always funded all the requests we've had so far because they've all been very reasonable and they also demonstrated the excellence and the potential of the student and of course since our students are our ambassadors we want them to excel. We do really care about our students doing well and so we have always been able to fund these equipment requests. A recent purchase, for example, we've made for our student was for one student we purchased an, uh, two iPhones and we've purchased a Raspberry Pi for another, a Parrot Mambo for another, etc, etc. So this is also a successful scheme that students do make use of and that pays off lots of rewards. We at what have a really excellent student well-being service. Uh, student well-being office. In this uh, office provides a number of services from counseling to disability support to study skills to coaching to time management a number of other courses to help the students really uh, run their life. I mean when students are at university it's a completely new experience from when they were at school and perhaps now they are even also not living with their parents or maybe even if they are living in, with their parents still it is still a new, a new way of life, being a student at university and being a student at school. And of course, at this age, you know, students face a lot of challenges and a lot of issues. And having, they have in the department, each student has a dedicated personal tutor, which gives them all the advice and guidance, academic advice, academic guidance, and, you know, discuss with them anything that the student needs to discuss 
throughout their studies with us at Harriet Watt. Sometimes really students need more. They probably need uh, more in managing some disability or in managing some uh, time or uh, in, in some mental issues they are having or some sadness they are facing or some uh, they need to talk to some professional counselor. And all this is all this is possible through our student well-being office and it's it's an excellent service and students do make use of it there's a number of reasons really why come and study at Harriet Watt the, perhaps the five I'm going to mention are that our students themselves our ambassadors they are the ones who really value our research-led teaching and our enthusiastic staff and they really our students like to take part in our research groups, in our research labs, in our activities, and really like to, uh, they are individual intelligent students who really are not just studying, they are studying and thinking and uh, watching how this whole area is developing. And they are very enthusiastic about the subject they have chosen. Also, the students in their fourth year have the ability to focus in the topic that is the most. Whether they like theory, whether they like games, whether they like AI, whether they like security. So there's all these options are open for them in year four. They can focus on it through their own individual project and by choosing the right courses, the right optional courses, mixture of these possible courses that are open to them in their fourth year. They will be guided in this choice also by their personal tutor if they need help from the personal tutor and also by the year director who will also assist them in making the right choice for them based on their abilities and their interests. We have a beautiful campus. We have a garden trail, a bird trail, sculpture trail, a tree trail. We have a lake. We have a, a Orium, a very impressive sports center. We have a wonderful gym facilities. We have greens for football, for tennis. We, we really have a great campus, beautiful campus. You feel like you are, in some sense, if you feel you want to go to a forest, there is this kind of forest for you. If you feel where you want to go to a sunken garden, there is a sunken garden for you. You want to go to some water, there is a lake, and there is a little river running through. So it's a beautiful campus, green trees and evergreen fir trees and all kind of trees. Scotland. Uh, Edinburgh is a beautiful city. It is Scotland's capital. It's really a vibrant place to live in and study. And the computer science department is a very friendly department. Our students themselves feel at home in the department and we really do take care of them as if they are our children. And of course, always they remain our ambassadors. Their success is our success and we still learn about our successes by by always hearing of our students that are all over the world leading innovation and technology in computer science. So we are very proud of our students and we very much wish them always all the best and are proud of all their achievements. So I hope I said enough for now for you to give you an idea about our programs and study at Harriet Watt in computer science. Thank you for listening. I wish you all the best. Keep healthy, keep happy, keep safe. And I hope to see you all at Harriet Watt. And I wish you all the best of career and of study and of life. Thank you for everything, for listening. And if you still have any questions, please email studywithus at harrietwatt.ac.uk. And goodbye.